It's the Travel Michigan Radio Program. I'm Dave Lorenz, along with George Zimmerman, and it's nice to have you along with us as well. And uh, boy, George, we're headed up to uh, the UP for our first guest. We are, yeah. We're going to talk about a big race coming up, a very special kind of race. And we're going to talk to uh, Tasha Steelstra. She's the owner of Nature's Kennel. And this race, as you can probably tell by the name of that company, involves dogs. Uh, So, Tasha, what is the big race coming up on uh, next Saturday, January 5th? Uh, The race is the Tequamanon Country Sled Dog Race. And it takes place north of Newberry, Michigan, near um, starts and finishes at Muscalange Lake State Park this year. Okay. And so one of the things about this is that people can do this even if they don't have their own dog sled team and dog sled, correct? They can. A couple years ago, we started a race package um, where, where people had done some sled dog tours with us through the years and they kind of wanted the next step. They talked about racing with us and what we do for Iditarod, and we thought, oh, this would kind of be, it's a neat, really local hometown event, and we offer a package where people can race their own team and be part of a real sled dog race. Well, that is very cool, and I'm not sure if I've ever heard of that before. No, I haven't actually, either. I mean, <laughs> you know, and, and we've we've done some dog sledding in the UP and, and had a chance to, you know, you know, lead a team, you know, through the woods and that kind of thing, but certainly not for a race. So, now what do you... Tr- What kind of training do they have that morning, or how does that work? Well, they do get some training. Our race package actually starts on the Friday before the race, so the people come to our place. Um, I talk to them quite a bit about just race rules, race etiquette, what to expect that day, what they're going to see on the trail. The race that people are going to do is a four-dog, 13-mile race, but they will encounter other teams. I talk about how to pass other teams, how to call trail, what to do if someone passes you. Um, and then they get to their own dog team that day and learn the four dogs that will be on their team. Um, it's pretty neat because some of them actually have Iditarod racing dogs on their on their little four dog team. I say, don't worry, they can get you home. Just hang on. <laughs> Just uh, stay with the sled. Right? So we do quite a bit of practice that afternoon. They actually go out twice and get to hook up and unhook their team, do a little race practice. Gotcha. And then on Friday night, we go into Newbury, where the official race banquet is. So they're part of the race banquet. They also learn the rules and race etiquette at the Mushers Banquet from the race marshal. And then on Saturday morning, the race starts at 9 a.m. The 12 dog professional class teams leave first. So they get to see kind of the big guns leave and the great big teams and be part of that whole atmosphere. And then at about 11 o'clock is when their race actually starts. Well, Tasha, you know, is this a thing where the dogs already know where they're going? Kind of like, you know, you know, being on a carriage on Mackinac Island, where they're going to just do the route so you don't have to worry about telling them go right, left, or yeah, how's that work? Definitely not, because oh, this that's, year, that's not good. No, most people don't know this yet. No, last the last um, the race has been going about fifteen years, and it's been held up at uh, Rainbow Lodge, which, due to the big forest fires up mm. here last summer, Rainbow Lodge was lost in the yeah, forest fire. Yeah, it's a shame. So the race has a new course at Muscalons Lake State Park. We've been very gracious. The DNR and state parks have been more than welcoming. So it's a course that no one has done before, dogs nor mushers. Hmm. So, And that is part of their training, how to give the dogs commands, gee, haw, what to do if you think you are lost. Uh, <laughs> but it's a race that is for beginners, so there's a lot of trail help. My, um, I have a staff of four winter guides. They race and are on the trail as well. They're not supposed to be competitive. They're supposed to help make sure our novice first-time mushers get to the finish line. But once they're out there, I'm never quite sure what happens. <laughs> hey, hey, Tasha, if, if you need help as, with a coach on that lost thing, I, I'm lost often. Yes. So I can he help is. you out there. He is. That's, that's, well, that's it true. can happen, <clears throat> but mo- and, you know, every corner's marked. I mean, it's, it, the race doesn't want to lose people either. So there are trail markings, and that's something we go over in our training, what, what trail markings they're looking for. Uh, the it's 13 miles. It's kind of an out and back course. In theory, nobody should get lost, but if they do, it's part of the adventure, and we make sure they get home. Well, the of course the season is just getting started for dog sledding, and um, have you been uh, um, kind of working the dogs during the, the the fall, kind of getting them ready for the season, or are they just kind of naturally ready to go? Well, they're naturally ready to go, but we actually start in about um, October. September, uh, start training the dogs every day. We use four-wheelers or side-by-side ATVs, something with good brakes and wheels. And then once we get good snow up here, we switch over everything to sleds. 
So we, they have been training for quite a while. And like I said, the race dogs that people use, they're dogs that are on the trail all the time. Uh, they know to follow a course and to follow a trail. They're not just going to shoot them through the woods. So, uh, How many teams but, do you think will, will be participating? Um, I can take ten, uh, ten what I call guest novice teams, uh, and then I'll have three of my staff on the trail as well. So we, we take about 55 dogs up to the race course that day. As far as the race overall, there's usually close to 100 teams that participate wow. in the Tukwaman on Sled Dog Race. That's a big race. And it is. It is. It's a, just a neat event because not only do people get to be, you know, kind of in a controlled situation for us doing it as, you know, racing their own team, but they get to see a, it's a real sled dog race. Hmm. Well, and I assume some people, uh, then you also have people who are just spectators for the race as well, correct? Definitely. And I, the thing I find with these race packages is neat is it adds just some new vitality to the race because, you know, I have one girl from Ohio, Anna, who comes up. She did the race last year, and she's doing it this year. Uh, she's about 18 years old, and her all of her friends and family come up, so she brings about 20 spectators with her. You know, so it's something that if you sign up for it, then all of your friends and family can come cheer you on and watch and see the event, and it's a very spectator-friendly event. Well, it sounds like a great time, whether you're participating or whether you're just a spectator. Uh, it's always great to be in the UP in that uh, McMillan area, so, uh, uh, you know, consider that for this coming weekend. It's a whole weekend activity, by the way, so I want to thank uh, Tasha. Steelstra, owner of Nature's Kennel, for joining us today. For more information, all you have to do is go to natureskennel.com, and they'll have a link to the uh, race information from their website as well. But we're going to find out what's happening with the Detroit Science Center next, right here on Travel Michigan, where your trip begins at michigan.org.